Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi and uh, we continue with our topic of discussion. And the topic is uh, reproduction. So today we are starting on reproduction in uh, animals. What we basically refer to as sexual reproduction in animals. Um, <clears throat> before we get into the details about uh, uh, sexual reproduction in animals, it is important to flash back a little bit or to reflect a little bit on uh, sexual reproduction. And we know that uh, this is the type of uh, reproduction that involves the fusion of the male and the female gametes. So sexual reproduction involves the fusion of male and female gametes. So in the case of animals, uh, the male gametes are the sperms or the sperm cells, while the female gametes are the eggs or the ova. Ova is the plural. When it is one, it's called the ovum. So basically, we find that uh, uh, the sperm cells and the ova, they have a nucleus. And that nucleus contains haploid number of chromosomes. Haploid number of chromosomes. And it happens that uh, when the nucleus of the male gamete fuses with the nucleus of the female gamete, then we refer to that as fertilization. So we are saying that uh, the male gamete nucleus fuses with the female gamete nucleus during fertilization to form a zygote to form a zygote Uh, it's also important uh, <coughs> to note that uh, it is important to note that gametes are produced by certain organs in our bodies, and those organs we refer to them as gonads. So we have the male gonads and we have the female gonads. So those are the organs that are responsible for the production of the gametes. So. Gametes are produced by special organs called gonads. In males, the testes. The test is with an E, that is the plural. Produce sperms. While in females, the ovaries. The ovaries produce ova, and when it is one, it's called the ovum. Ovum is singular, 
and ova is plural. So the ova are also referred to as the eggs. So the fusion that occurs between the male uh, gametes, which are the sperms, and the ova, they are the ones that constitute sexual reproduction. So we are saying that uh, uh, the ova and the sperms are produced by special organs that are referred to as gonads. So in males, the gonads are the testes, while in females, the gonads are the ovaries. Uh, then uh, we are going to also study the two types of fertilization. Uh, we have some animals that have external fertilization and we have others that have internal fertilization. So fertilization can either be internal or external. So at that point, uh, we are going to study external fertilization, which happens in amphibians. External fertilization in amphibians. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, even fish also have external fertilization. Uh, we'll use an example of uh, the amphibians here, like the frogs and toads. And uh, this one happens that uh, uh, the female lays eggs. But as the female is laying the eggs, uh, the male mounts it and deposits sperm on those eggs so that fertilization occurs externally. So we are saying that uh, the male frog, for example, mounts the female as it lays eggs. and deposits the sperms on the eggs to allow fertilization to occur externally. So the male mounts the female as the female is laying the eggs and deposits the sperms on those eggs. <coughs> uh, the eggs that are laid by the female are usually in very large numbers to increase the chances of fertilization and also to increase the chances of survival because some of the eggs may be attacked by bacteria may be attacked by predators, and so on and so forth. So they must be laid in very large numbers so that uh, um, they, there is a higher chance of them surviving. Uh, number two, those eggs are also covered by a, uh, by a slimy jelly-like substance, and that slimy jelly-like substance discourages the predators from feeding on them. Uh, it also makes those eggs to be buoyant, to be able to float on the water, and also attaches the eggs to the water plants so that they are not easily carried by the water uh, currents.
So they are laid in very large numbers to increase their chances of survival and also enhance fertilization. To increase the chances of uh, fertilization. So the eggs laid by the amphibians are covered by a slimy, that's a very uh, slimy or very smooth jelly-like substance. And that substance has a role that it plays to one, discourage the predators from feeding on the eggs. To, imp uh, to improve aeration, that is exposure to the air, to make the eggs float on the water and also to attach the eggs to the water plants. So we are saying that uh, the eggs that are laid, uh, they need to be covered by a jelly-like substance, a slimy jelly-like substance that is able to discourage the predators from feeding on those eggs. Also, it helps to improve on aeration, the air circulation. Uh, it also makes the eggs buoyant or to be able to float on the water and also attaches the eggs to the water plants so that they are not carried away by, by the water uh, currents. So that is as far as the external fertilization, uh, how it happens in amphibians. And we have also said that uh, that external fertilization also occurs in fish. So not just the amphibians, but also happens in fish. In the case of fish, the female lays eggs in the water and the male just comes and sheds the, the sperms onto those eggs. So the first question, uh, name the special organs that produce gametes in animals. B, explain how external fertilization occurs in amphibians. And number two, state the role of the jelly-like substance that covers the eggs of amphibians. So we'll stop there until next time. Goodbye. <laughs>